Hello. Welcome. Time for part two of the Stealing Masterclass. This is going to be the Red Hand Edition. There was just a very large overhaul to how thieves work on Outlands. The whole stealing skill got a variety of adjustments, and this is going to be sort of an overview on how to be successful in the new universe. So I'm not going to go over a lot of the mechanics themselves. There's a lot of great resources of what the exact changes are. I'm going to be referencing them, though. So if you don't know, go and check out one of the other kind of videos from a lot of great Outlands content creators who go over that. What this will be is this will be sort of a more advanced overview on how to really be successful with the new changes. So let's get into it. The first thing that I want to touch on is the template. I have changed my template that I use to be successful while stealing quite a bit. Let's go ahead and take a look. So stats, those are all the same. Max HP, max mana, they are on intelligence, no problem. Stealth, still 120, need lots of stealth steps, hiding, snooping, etc. It's all in there. Lock picking, this is new. I've dropped wrestling in favor of lock picking. As of this patch, you can now get into locked boxes with lock picking. So that is why I have this here, and I'll go into sort of details around that here later on, but this is a valuable new pickup that I definitely recommend. However, you are dropping some defensive capabilities for it. With In this case, I dropped wrestling. Other changes, Majory, I brought that up to 80. It's very, very important now in this new universe that you can cast invisibility with consistency. So that is why Majory has been brought up to 80. I dropped Magic Resist down to 70 to account for that. And then Alchemy. Did a bunch of testing with healing on one end and with alchemy on the other. And I am definitely of the camp that 50 alchemy is far better than 50 healing. It heals you immediately. It, the bandage timer with 25 decks is 15 seconds, which is enormous. So those two kind of compound uh, to make alchemy, I think, the better defensive choice over healing for that last slot. So... Pretty simple changes, mostly more majory, drop wrestling, pick up lock picking, and uh, we can go into the kind of specifics of that here coming up. So that's getting the basics out of the way. All right, let's talk about the big new changes in the patch and how to be successful. There's two of them. I'm going to go over them one at a time. The first one is the introduction of pilfering. So pilfering gets you black goods. Those are just basically more items. I'm sure people understand how those work. Um, an important thing is that I hear people talk about a lot is how scarcity works. Let's go over that really quick. Let's head over to Outpost. You need to talk to a thief vendor in order to access the black market goods. A little bit of a, of a tip. You can actually do it above ground here with this thief. You just type black market. And even though she's underground, you can access, access it here. So this is a little bit nice. lets you access the black market without needing to like find one of the weirdly hidden away thief vendors. And then there's these scarcity values. These generate a lot of confusion for people. Is it good when scarcity is low? Or is it better when the number is higher? It's always better when the number is higher. So plus 50% is the highest it can be. You want to turn in black goods only when the numbers are big. So this week, for example, very rares, great, turn those in. Extremely common, great, turn those in. Un, you know, regular common and rare, you should wait. Negative numbers bad, positive numbers good. Okay, otherwise, because of black goods and pilfering, you're gonna maybe ask yourself, hey, I'm a red hand thief, I wanna steal from players, will I be pilfering? The answer is yes, you will. There's a variety of circumstances where it will be valuable, and as a result, there's a settings change I recommend to make that a little bit easier, which is down here. Make sure that you have a monster select modifier on. This will let you be able to pull up monster health bars more easily for pilfering. Okay, let's talk about some circumstances under which you're going to want to be pilfering as a red hand thief. Again, as part of this overview, I'm going to pull up video footage showcasing exact examples. That way I can talk about them in more kind of specifics without having to go and find them. Hope that I find the right circumstances in real time. So the first circumstances is you're just on your way towards somebody. I'm stealthing around in SSC in this circumstance. I'm just, I don't want to reveal myself. I'm going from mark to mark to mark. As I do this, I'm going to basically run by 
regular mobs on my way and pilfer them. So here's an example where on my way up here uh, to these two fine fellows, I run by this spectral priest. I go ahead and just wait the extra two seconds, pilfer, and then I'm on my way. Um, you'll notice here that this is an example where I got two very rare goods from that pilfer. That's like an MCD and a skill ball or something. This is why it's worthwhile to be pilfering on a red hand thief. You have a higher chance of getting good black goods. Black goods can uh, turn into some pretty valuable things and you're not really losing any time if you just drive by pilfer on your way to other activities. What I don't recommend is going out of your way to pilfer if it's not on the way towards doing a red hand activity. But it's pretty common to find them in that drive by scenario as you're already stealthing towards somebody. Uh, the other case that is really common with pilfering is the guy just doesn't have anything, right? Here's an example where I'm looking through this guy's pack, check all of his trap pouches, nothing in them, you know? And I'm like, all right, that guy's got nothing. So I head on up here and I blow my steel cool down on that familiar, and then I'm on my way to go do other things, right? So that's another example where you're on your way to a mark, pilfer. The mark doesn't have anything, and there's a mob nearby, pilfer. The other example, which is really common, is I'm on my way towards something. Like, I just enter SSC here. I'm not going to snoop these guys right here in the entrance. They probably just arrived as well. I'm looking to get down onto floor two. So I'm just running along. But as I'm running towards floor two, I see a mob. This is where a particularly nuanced mechanic comes into play. If you are pilfering, you have a much higher success chance while hidden. Makes sense. It's a thief mechanic. You're, it's encouraging you to be hidden. Important distinction here. For some reason, invisibility counts as being hidden for the purposes of pilfering. So if you want to go really fast, you don't want to wait to for, you know the 10 second cooldown it would take to hide and then steal, you can do this. You can run over to the mob, cast invisibility first, and then immediately steal since there's no cooldown, and then be on your way because being invisible again counts as being hidden for the purposes of pilfering so this is a way where you can you're on your way somewhere you wouldn't be stopping steel anyways you can spend the extra two seconds to stop invis pilfer okay now there's also another value add to pilfering beyond the black goods you're getting and you see it here i am getting aspect experience it also gives you mastery chain experience this is huge. There's finally a way to level aspects as a red hand thief. You can see I'm actually rocking shadow aspect now. This is new as of the overhaul. This is really, really helpful for a variety of reasons. One, better disguise. I blend in. I have an aspect on. I'm not as obviously a thief. Two, it gives me more stealth steps. The more I level my aspect, the more stealth steps I get. That's great. And then three, there's a new mechanic to shadow aspect specifically, which is you now heal while moving if you are stealthed. So we can sort of see that here. This is actually extremely valuable. There's a lot of times as a thief that you're taking incidental damage, like right there. The, I took a little bit of damage from that chandelier, right? Also, I might get cut by AoE, you know, who knows what's going to happen. I'm taking a lot of damage because I'm a nefarious individual. You can see as I walk around now, I'm getting that plus five, plus five, plus five. And this is happening because of my shadow aspect. So a really, really helpful new mechanic here with shadow aspect that is letting you kind of recover incidental damage without having to stop, reveal yourself, cast greater heal, right? And then wait for the cool down on hiding and stealthing again. Okay, so there's also another mechanic about aspect experience that you're gonna wanna be looking into. And that is that in order to maximize your aspect experience gain, you need to have a weapon and armor equipped. 50% of it goes to armor, 50% of it goes to weapon, right? This is why I have a spell book equipped with shadow aspect. It's really important that you're going to want to be using a spell book for this to make your lives easier. This is because a spell book will not automatically drop when you're casting spells, and you can use your blessed spell book. So as you're being killed all the time, you don't need to be worrying about replacing that weapon, right? Your blessed regular spell book can just be aspected here. So that's great. And then finally, the last good thing about pilfering, which is it levels the new thief codex. Uh, this is a question that I see asked a lot, which is, hey, 
I'm a red hand thief. Do I care about the thief codex? Isn't it just for PVM? The answer is yes, you do care about it. One, because you should be pilfering. It levels exper your aspect, which is good for PVP stealing, and it's giving you a chance for rare black goods, which is great. The other thing, though, is that this codex does give direct value to PVP. It gives them in the form of overlooked. This will reduce the range of creatures in terms of when they will aggro on you. This is really, really valuable for aggroing other people onto mobs and not onto yourself. Really, really valuable. The other thing here, which is nice, is smoke bomb cooldown reduction. Smoke bombs are a new thing in the overhaul. They're amazing. We'll go over exactly how to use them to maximum effect here in a second. But you can also reduce the cooldown here. So you can see this is what I run, it's what I recommend. Six points camouflage, six points extortion, six points overlooked, and then one in distraction, and one in without a trace. That maximizes your ability to be pilfering, gaining aspect experience, uh, and gets you some of the maximized kind of PvP benefits. The reason why you don't go more points in without a trace is because it's unnecessary. You're not going to be using a smoke bomb faster than about once every 90 seconds. Okay, so that's basically it for pilfering good you should be doing it once in a blue moon you'll get something good from it it's fine uh now let's talk about the other big change with the overhaul which is the red hand system so if i pull up my old thief friend here you can see that there is also gray hand membership and red hand membership we're obviously red hand this means that we can be attacked from anywhere uh, and it means that um, we're going to be attacked much more frequently and need to be escaping. So I want to go over some more advanced techniques for how to survive and when those come into play. First things first, you can disguise yourself better now. Disguise kits have been improved, but they are no longer necessary. Previously, you needed to use a disguise kit just to reach 100% chance to steal. Now it's optional. You have a 75% base chance. So I actually don't use a disguise kit because I'm a big weirdo, and I like to be recognized, and that gets me attacked a lot more. But don't do as I do. I recommend that you do use a disguise kit, and they have a lot more options now, which is great. Now, the other thing to keep, uh, keep in mind here is that the, the reason you will be attacked most frequently is actually not because of the red hand mechanic. It is because of a different change that happened as part of the patch, which is notice. Notice is the mechanic that happens in cities, where if you are noticed, you will turn gray to everyone, not just the person who you stole from, right? Everyone, you'll be global gray. This now happens everywhere in the game, including dungeons. So you will be attacked a lot more because of it. Here is an example of this. So I go in for a steal. I'm like, all right, you know, some arcane scrolls. Never sleep on arcane scrolls. That's what we always say. So I steal them. And you'll notice I was noticed. It says it here, you have committed a criminal act and I have turned gray. This is what will get you more than anything else. If you turn gray because of notice, you will be attacked with great consistency. And we can see that here. The person I stole from actually continues to go about their business. They're not interested in chasing me. But this other person, Lady Sirs, Lady Sirs here is like, oh, a gray person? Hell yeah, I want some of that thief, thief action. And she's, uh, she starts chasing me down. I can't steal yet, I'm on cooldown, I try to invis, don't get it off, and you can see she starts attacking me. This is really common. You're going to be attacked a lot more in dungeons now with the patch, and most of it is actually going to be because of the notice mechanic turning you gray, and not necessarily because of red hand. Now in this case, Lady Sirs is a silly Dexter, so I can simply run through the transition point and hide, just like we talked about in the previous video, and this will, you know, get Dexters off your tail nine times out of ten. Pretty simple. Now... Because you're being attacked a lot more frequently due to notice and a little bit of because of red hand, you need to survive a lot more. This is where smoke bombs come into play. Smoke bombs are an incredibly powerful tool for surviving, and you're going to want to be using them. So it is important that you always have them in your loadout. They can fit inside of the uh, shelf here somewhere. Somewhere weird. They're in the very last category. Here they are. Smoke bombs. To use them, uh, you can just make a Razor script for it. So I have one here under Thief for Smoke, and it's simply this, the click type bombs. I bind this to a hotkey, and there you go. You have a hotkey to use Smoke Bombs. Nice and simple. Now, how should you use Smoke Bombs? There are three things to keep in mind about using Smoke Bombs effectively. Let's go over them. 
you too can be a ninja with these three tips. The first one, there is no delay in stealing and then using a smoke bomb. You can take an item and then be fucking gone <laughs> immediately. So here's an example where I have already triggered notice leading up to this point. You can see that my character is gray by the little gray aura underneath his feet. So when I steal here, it reveals me, and I am going to immediately, after I steal, use a smoke bomb, because I do not want to be visible while globally gray. As we saw before, that's a recipe for Lady Sirs to come chase you down and try to kill you. So you can see I... I already had the item on uh, last target there as well. I had been chasing that person. So I come up, I steal, and you can see I got a little command core here, and then bam, I use a smoke bomb. Instantly hidden. I was probably revealed for half a second after that steal. So if you are in a position where you think you will be attacked immediately after stealing because you stole something really good like an antiquity or you happen to be gray going into the steal, smoke bomb immediately. All right, the other smoke bomb tip. Misdirection. Stealing's a mind game. It's all about the art of war. Get in your opponent's head. What do you think they're going to do? Use that against them. So in this circumstance, I steal something. Something on last target. What do I have? Oh, this little red die. Metallic cherry die. It turns me global gray. I start running. I see that person uh, says all kill. We go back there here. So we know that she's about to attack me. I use a smoke bomb before she gets the attack off, and then I immediately change direction. The old misdirection, right? So I, I start going one direction, smoke bomb, do a 180, start running the other direction. The reason for this, she thinks I kept going in the direction that I smoked, right? So she's going to cast reveal down there, and, you know, she probably cast reveal a little bit further than where I smoked bomb, thinking I was still going in that direction. If I had kept moving, that reveal could have could have gotten me, and then everyone would dogpile onto me here. But smoke bomb, change direction, and then it's very, very unlikely they will cast reveal in the correct location. Good tip. Works nine times out of ten, and then you can, uh, you know, dump your metallic cherry die all over your favorite chair and sit on it like a king or queen. The other mechanic, last one, smoke bombs. This guy's attacking me. I probably stole something from him, or maybe he just, you know didn't like my style, who knows, but he's attacking me. I'm trying to hide, uh, but I can't do it. You can see here, I can't seem to hide right now. This is because he's aggroed onto me and he's in line of sight and he's within eight tiles, right? So standard hiding rules, can't hide, but smoke bombs, right? Just like hiding will work if you break line of sight. So I can be spamming my uh, smoke bomb key Right, And then as bright as I'm going to go around this corner, the moment I break line of sight, that smoke bomb will succeed. So you can see that here. I go around the corner, bam, smoke bomb. And then he's a Dexer. He can't do anything about it, so he's gone. That is another good tip for smoke bombs, right? So you can use them immediately. Change direction when you do use them, especially if somebody can reveal and then leverage the fact that you can break line of sight if somebody is on you and you're trying to get to a point where you want to be able to smoke bomb. Okay, those are techniques that you will be able to use against regular people, right? People who are casting reveal, your standard marks in dungeons. However, there's a new classification of person who you're gonna encounter now as of the patch, which is the thief hunter. Because of the red hand mechanic, we can now be tracked and revealed and attacked even if we did not steal from somebody. And there are people who make characters specifically for this purpose. Uh, they try to enforce the law and crack down on our nefarious shenanigans. How dare they? And therefore, we're going to give them a run for their money. So this is really common as well. So here's an example of it. I'm going about my business. You know, I'm just trying to steal from the rich and give to me. What's wrong with that? Why is that such a bad deal, right? And this this person's like, no, none of that, not in my SSC. So they reveal me. They use detect hidden at, instead of reveal, and this is an important distinction. Detect hidden has a huge radius and does not get broken by line of sight. This means, let's say I try to go around the corner and smoke bomb here, right? He's just going to hit detect hidden again, and it's going to immediately reveal me. There's no way I can basically like hide in front of his face and get away from him. 
in the way that I could against a regular mark. So, what do you do against Thief Hunters? Well, here's what you do. You run them through mobs. Thief Hunters always have garbage templates. They're usually Poison Dexers, they rarely take Majory, they cannot PVM, they will die to mobs faster than you will. So every time a Thief Hunter gets me, I always take them on a loop through mobs. I actually try to teleport here, and my intention is to teleport past this Spectral Lancer, right? So again, so that the, the Spectral Lancer attacks the Thief Hunter, but I flub it because I'm a big doofus in this case. So I actually miss the teleport, doesn't do anything, but you know, it doesn't even matter. I run through, I just run past all of these guys, I aggro these mobs, but because of the way that mob aggro works, right, they're going to aggro onto me, but then if I'm out of their range two seconds or so after they aggro, they're just going to turn right back around on whoever's chasing you, which in this case is this squishy thief hunter. So you can see they all actually flip onto him, so I can simply turn around and hide, and he's got much bigger fish to fry now than trying to chase me, because he's going to die really quick being run through these mobs. I have killed countless thief hunters this way, and at a minimum, if they don't die, they at least leave you alone, right? They're not going to be able to keep chasing you. If you want to get a thief hunter off your back, do not try to simply hide from them. Always run them through mobs. Prime a teleport, get a group of mobs, teleport past them, and you're gone. The thief hunter cannot chase after you in that circumstance. All right. Another just general escape technique, since we're in the we're in the uh, general category of like, hey, you're gonna be attacked. What do you do to survive? I didn't cover it in my last video, but a lot of people have mentioned it to me since then, which is like, what about wall of stone? Shouldn't thieves use wall of stone? Wall of stone is a great escape tool. Of course, absolutely. What's better than putting a giant wall in front of somebody's face? That that lets them know who's biz, you know what who's in charge. It lets them know that you're a a strong magical mason who can construct you know barriers at a moment's notice. So it's it is important to be thinking about this in your arsenal as well, especially if you are in a section like this, which is a little bit more of a tight corridor, right? It's the it's the width of a wall of stone. If somebody is chasing you, like this particular case where uh, this this fine person is trying to chase me down and you can just drop a wall of stone right in front of their face and it's it's over right they're not going to be able to chase you through this so definitely be doing this as well in fact in this circumstance i lose him but then his friend here on the other side recognizes me so i need to ch run from this person and i actually use the other technique I, I as soon as i break line of sight with that corner i can then use a smoke bomb so i wall of stone off the first person line of sight the second person, use the smoke bomb the moment he's line of sighted, and then do the misdirection technique, right? I go around the corner, smoke bomb, do a 180, and start moving the other direction. And then I'm safe, right? Neither of those two people can get to me. And these are the kind of escape techniques that if you want to be a successful red hand thief in our new world, you got to master them. You got to be, you got to embrace your inner ninja and you got to be an expert at smoke bombs, learn to use wall of stone and understand when can I hide against somebody versus when do I need to pull them through walls. And again, the answer is if they're using detect hidden, you either need to wall them off or pull them through mobs. If they're casting reveal, you can just do standard immediate smoke bombs or your usual kind of light of sight hiding techniques. All right, that's surviving. New survival techniques based around smoke bombs. What's next? There's another critical thing that this overview is going to cover as a result of the patch changes, and that is, drum roll, can't really see it, drum roll, locked boxes, the bane of thief life prior to the thief overhaul. I would sometimes go into a dungeon, there'd be like eight or nine people down there, Every single one of them had a locked box. It's been changed. Now, if you have the lock picking skill, which again, if we look at our template, we now do, you can now lock pick into people's boxes while it's in their inventory and steal items out of it. As a result, it's important to have lock picks in your loadout now. So you can see I have smoke bombs in my loadout and I also take lock picks in my loadout. Okay. Now, What's important to know here? The most important thing is that as a result of thieves being able to get into boxes, people have taken new precautions. They People will carry around decoy boxes that explode. They're trapped and they will kill you if you try to open them and double click them. So how do you deal with this? There's an answer to that. The answer is you can actually tell 
if a box is trapped and is going to explode, or if it's not, and you can lockpick it without actually trying to do so and exploding. This is how you do it. Here's an example. I snoop this guy. He has two locked boxes. This is pretty common. You're going to see this happen. One of these is his real locked box with loot in them. One of them is a trapped box which will explode. If I was to just try to double click right now, I would have a 50-50 chance. If I double click the trapped box right now, trying to see if it can be lockpicked, I will explode. So what do you do? The answer is you take one step back. So you can see what I'm going to do here is I take one step away from him, like that, boom, I'm now one tile away. Locked boxes can be interacted with from two tiles away, but snooping requires one tile. Now, I can double click both of those boxes safely, even if it is, even if it is trapped, I will not explode. And you can see what happens here. I double click that one, boom, it says that is too far away. It does not say that is locked, and it does not bring up the lock picking UI. That means that's trapped box. If I had done that one tile closer, I'd be dead right now. But now I know that's the trapped box. So now I can double click the other one, which we do. Boom, lock picking menu comes up. Again, because this menu will come up as long as you are within two tiles. They work like dungeon chests. You can interact with them within two tiles. So using this technique of always interact with them first from one tile away, you can understand, is it a trapped box that's gonna explode? If it is, it'll simply say, that box is too far away. Is it instead their locked box with loot in it? It'll bring up the lock picking me menu just like this. And most importantly, well, actually that's most importantly, so this is second priority, is that you can lock pick from two tiles away as well. So as long as I am within two tiles, lock picking will work. And most importantly, that will work if you are within two tiles when it starts and when it ends. You can be any distance in between it. So let's back up a little second. I start lock picking and then he moves and I chase after him and I am then back in the range. I'm back in two tiles when it actually attempts to succeed and it says lock pick success. So it's actually relatively simple to lockpick into somebody's box, even if they're moving around. Be in two tiles when it starts, chase them around, be within two tiles when it ends. You do not need to stay within range of them for the whole lockpicking duration. The other thing that's worth noting is if he runs off like he does here, this doesn't close. This lockpicking menu stays up indefinitely, regardless of range. So I can slowly stealth my way back to him and then start lock picking right where I picked off. The progress that I made against it also saves. So it might take you two or three minutes of chasing after somebody, but you can, with 100% consistency, get into that box. And there's probably gonna be something good in there, like a Supreme Instrument or Weapon Oil, or who knows, maybe an Antiquity. So this is a really helpful way to be just getting more loot. Again, especially if you use the technique of be two tiles away, and then double click all the boxes and then use that to determine which one is going to explode you versus which one is, is the actual one you want to be lockpicking. Okay, that is the patch changes. So everything there is the sort of changes I have done to be very successful uh, in the new Thief overhaul universe. I find myself being just as successful as I was prior to the Thief overhaul. I am killed roughly the same amount of times. Um, I am attacked more, for sure, but they have also given thieves way more tools to survive when you are attacked, such as smoke bombs. So, good overall, you know, it's 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 good. I get I get more stuff from pilfering. I can level aspect. I can level my chain. I have can get into locked boxes. I'm not being killed more. Um, there's more opportunities for people to try to be attacking me, which makes them hopefully feel good, even if they're a stupid thief hunter who I just kill by running through mobs. Um, it's, it's good, as long as you employ these techniques, you too can be a master thief. Now, there's some other stuff, some other fun things. So this is the second half here, right? The other half of this video is going to be just new tips and tricks that I have learned, not related to the patch, just new things I have picked up since the last masterclass video. So these are just generally good things. First, there's some housekeeping, some things I just forgot to cover in my last video. One, 
you always want to have these two buffs up before you go into a dungeon. You want to put Magic Reflection up, it's critical. They try to paralyze you, it's going to bounce it back on them. They try to flame strike you, it's going to roast their face. And the other one is Reactive Armor. It does something for Dexers, makes them harder to kill you or whatever. Have both of these on, they last forever. Otherwise, kind of like we talked about, add Smoke Bombs, add these to your loadout. And um, also I've added, if I see it on here, Mm. Next page. There we go. One strength potion. This is also a really helpful thing to have on you. If you find yourself finding somebody with a lot of gold in their corpse, you can't carry it all out. You can pop a strength potion, carry more gold, take it out of the dungeon. If if you're almost at weight capacity and somebody casts weaken on you, and you get stopped in your tracks because of weight, hit the strength potion, go along your way. Having a backup strength potion is good. I don't carry more than one because it's pretty infrequently I need to use it, and I want to maximize the, number, the amount of items and weight of items I can store in my backpack uh, to really maximize my haul out of the dungeon. So, some quick loadout uh, housekeeping. Also, you're going to be using full armor loadout for sure now, because it's required for aspect, right? So, I have a healthy supply of leather armor uh, that I use just to make sure I can keep my aspect on. Some basic stuff. Let's get into the, the other fun stuff. So, Stealing is all about last object, right? You set something on last object, you steal it. And you maybe sometimes go in for the steal, and it doesn't work. It fails. You got to go back around. You got to try again. If somebody's attacking you during this, and you cast greater heal on yourself in the, the usual fashion, right? Um, you know, you go into your book, and you're like, I would like to heal myself. Greater heal. Bam. Cast it. Targeted on myself. Even if you do this through a script, like cast greater heal, wait for target, target self, it's going to change your last target to you, and that'll break. However, I've learned something, which is sort of weird since the last video, which is if you do this through the built-in razor heal, this one, greater heal slash cure self, this will cast greater heal on you without changing your last target. So make sure that you are healing yourself via this specific built-in razor functionality. Greater heal slash cure self. Now, you can set an item as last target, get whacked in the face, heal yourself, hit steal last target, and it will still succeed. It will not get replaced with you when you heal yourself. So that's a good one. Other thing that's really valuable. I recommend turning on... Do, do, do. A new setting here and I should have looked at where it is prior to recording this so I don't look like an idiot as I kind of look around for it but bear bear with me it's in here it's in here somewhere I know it I know it to be true deep in my heart maybe it's in interface no maybe it's in Pretty sure it is in general. Where I wish there was a search functionality. Um, here it is. Show HP. Mobiles. Show HP line always. This is really important. This will put this bar underneath people's hit point, hit, uh, underneath their character models. Why is this important? Why do I recommend this? Show HP, show line always. It is because. I am tired of going around a corner into SSC and then getting blasted by a marksman that I couldn't see because they were behind a wall. With this on, you can see the health bar even through the walls, and I can see if there is an enemy monster waiting to destroy me <laughs> as I try to escape around a corner. Particularly useful in places that have one-shot kill uh, monsters like um, Shadow Spire Cathedral. So with this on, you can see them a lot more easily and avoid getting blasted. Uh, so that's that's helpful. Uh, I had a, a good a good thief friend of mine I was talking to this morning, and he was like, you know, I stole an antiquity this morning, and then I went around a corner, and I got blasted by a, a marksman, and I lost it. And, you know, hey, turn this setting on. You can see that marksman there. Maybe uh, you won't get blasted next time. So everyone should follow this tip. Do that too. Okay. Now let's really get into some uh, some advanced techniques. A lot of people store stuff in trapped pouches. Everyone knows that. You're a thief. You got to get into trapped pouches all the time. 
it's really important to be able to open the pouch and then put an item on last target before they run away. Really, that's just, you know, stealing 101, right? So how do you do that? A technique that I have been using more and more, if I see a trap pouch like here, I know that trap pouch has something in it. There's no other trap pouches in here. I know it's going to be that one. I wait until he begins a flame strike cast. If you try to open a trap pouch while they're casting a spell, it locks their character. Even if they notice immediately and they try to get away from you, they can't. They're locked in place for this duration. You can open this trap pouch and get into it with enough time that I can set last target, right? He is not able to escape because he was locked in from casting uh, and I'm able to get this on last target. And then I'm able to do my standard, you know, teleport next to him, hit steal last target, boom, and we got the item. If I did not try to open that while he was casting a spell, he probably would have run away before I was able to get it on last target, and this wouldn't have worked. So always try to time it with them casting a spell to have better success at getting into it. Okay, now let's get into the real advanced stuff. There's, everyone has steal last target. There you go, there's mine, steal last target. I have made another macro here, which I use in an alternate circumstance which is this one, pop, bag, and steal. So this one differs in that before I steal my last target, but after I have primed stealing, right? So stealing is primed, I hit my last object, and then I hit last target. This is amazing. This, this gets me so many steals that people don't expect. It is, it is one of the most, every time I do it, I feel so clever, and now you can too. Here's why. Let's look at a case. I go and I see a nice guy and I'm like, oh, what's in your pouch? What's in here? There's the trap pouch. I open it. He's running. He's right. He's down here right now, right? I've gotten into the pouch and I see that he's got a, a doodle here. I got a nice little fire arrow thing. I put it on last target. Bam. It's on last target. Now, that pouch it was in just disappeared. This is really common. He moved it into a new trap pouch. He just dragged that whole pouch into a new trap pouch. Pretty common, right? Normally, I would have to go and open that trap pouch, and then he would run away again and repeat. And then he would just repeat and repeat and repeat, and I would never get that item. However, I have it on last target. What I can do is I can guess, hey, which one of these pouches did he probably put it in? He probably just dragged it to the most, the closest one, right? The pouch was here. He probably just dragged it into this one right here. So I, what I do is I, you can see, I will double click that pouch, boom. Oop, I just reset my video. That's, well, let me watch it again. Uh, so I pop it, I set his last target. He moves the pouch into a different location. And then I set the pouch I think it went into as my last object simply by double clicking it, which you see I do right here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit that new script. I'm going to walk over to him and I'm going to hit my new script that I just showed you guys. Bam. And you can see it did two things on the same frame. It popped that trap pouch that I had as last target, which is why you see negative one. And the item, remember, was already on last target. And because the pouch is no longer trapped, I'm able to steal it instantly. I actually don't need to go in and snoop it, which and snooping in, snooping it is what triggers the delay on stealing, right? So because I had steal already primed, then we pop the trap pouch, then I can execute steal instantly and we get the item. So as long as you can get it on last target once and they either retrap it with spells or they move it to a new trap pouch, you're in business. You can just get the new trap pouch on last object go in and hit this script and steal it out from under him. Super, super cool. Okay. Let's talk about even more advanced tactics to be successful. Last object, right? Let's go, let's go to Prev. We'll do this, we'll do this in game. No, no more videos, we'll do it live. All right. I go and I open somebody's pouch. It's on last object, right? I can run away, I can run back over, I can hit last object, it opens it. Easy peasy. Everyone knows that. But I'm like, okay, what if we do something that you kind of see in like RTSs, right? You can like have different units on different control groups. I thought, why can't, why don't I do that for bags? So that's exactly what I've done. If we pull up Razor here, I now have 
two new hotkeys here, set bag one, set bag two, and you can see the scripts here, it's straightforward. I bind these, and then I have another set that opens them. D-click bag one, D-click bag two. Now, and I have these on like shift and uh, and regular, These hot, it doesn't actually show it down here. Let's go into here, bag, bag one, you can see I have like set bag one is shift and then snoop bag one is regular, right? So let's say I wanna open this black pouch he has. Now I can set that to be F2. So I hit my save hotkey, now that bag is F2. This basically lets me have multiple last objects saved independently. Now I can open his regular bag, right? It's on last object, so I can run over here, hit F1, which is my last object key, that opens. Or I can run over here, hit F2, which is his other bag. No longer do you have to worry about only one thing being on last object. I can, you can have as many of these hotkeys as you want, right? I have a third one on F3, so I can open this guy's bag, you know, that one right there, save it as F3. Right, come over to this guy, F2, that's his bag. Run over to this guy, F3, that's his bag. Both of them were weirdly empty, so not, you know, kind of a weird example to showcase, but basically I can be storing many, many bags independently, and this is really, really helpful, especially because there's a circumstance that a lot of people have where you go into somebody's bag and they're gonna have a whole bunch of trapped pouches in it. They usually have all their trapped pouches in one particular bag, which surely there's somebody in here who's a good example of this. There we go, bam. I can store this bag on F2, on one of my hotkeys, start looking inside his trap ones, right? Then he moves. I haven't got through them all. I clicked on three of them there. There's three more. He moves. The bag closes. This is great. Last object is one of those trap pouches. It's useless to me, right? But now I can chase after him and hit my other hotkey, and I've saved that bag with his trap pouches in it, and now I can just keep going about my business and look at the other three that I know I didn't get a chance to look at before. And if this bag was hidden somewhere deep in his pack, I don't need to go through the process of re-snooping him to get here. I can just save it on these hotkeys. And again, you can have as many of these hotkeys as you would like. This is very helpful. Okay. Bag hotkeys. There's now one more incredibly advanced technique that leverages these bag hotkeys. Uh, which I have just put together here as well. And that is finding hidden pouches. Something that is really common is people will put, uh, you know, pouches underneath other pouches. So you can see it's pretty common in the upper left, right? You have nine trap pouches and one real pouch underneath it. Now you could get into this in a couple different ways. If somebody has that circumstance, right? They have a bunch of, of hidden pouches. One way is you can go into Razor. You can go into options, you can go into targeting and cues, you can check object delay on, and you can change this to 4,000 milliseconds, four seconds, right? And start dragging. This is the technique everyone's familiar with. It works, uh, but you know, it requires you to alt tab in the razor, requires some weird stuff. So I have made a new script, which I will show here. Leaf search pouches. Uh, it's hard to see here, so I'll bring it up in Visual Studio Code. People can pause this and take a look at what this is doing if they are curious. But what this does is it will put any non-trapped pouch on the first two, since I use two bag hotkeys, but you can use more. It'll put the first two non-trapped pouches in the bag I'm snooping onto those bag hotkeys. This is great because if one of their bags is in a place that's hard to get to one of their pouches is in like underneath other trap pouches it's no problem it puts it on that hotkey and i can access it much more easily so let's give it a try i go into this guy's pouch i see that he has a bunch imagine that all these trap pouches were on top of this one just for the sake of this this experiment i hit my save hidden pouch to bag hotkey script which is the one that i just showed and now it saved the first non trapped pouch to my bag hotkey which is f2 and now I can get into it. And he has nothing in it. What are all these people with nothing in their bags? But that's a really helpful technique for basically getting into people's pouches a little bit more easily and in a way that's a little bit less brittle because you can continue to click around and not have last object ruin your life as you're trying to find cool things in people's pouches. Um, so if, if somebody does have some hidden thing, right, you can just 
slam it onto one of your bag hotkeys and get into it a little bit more easily than it would otherwise take. Okay. That's it. That's the new set of tips and tricks. A lot of cool stuff here that has helped me be way more successful now, um, both as a result of changes in the Thief overhaul, also just some new cool tips and tricks, bag hotkeys, you know, being able to steal those items out of a pouch, even if it's in a trapped pouch already, as long as you have it on last target. Just some, some new cool tips and tricks that will hopefully make you Outland's next Master Thief. So let me know if these work. Go ahead and throw me a message if there's something here that I didn't cover that you've discovered, which is cool and exciting. Um, but this is kind of the, the latest and greatest on how to be a Master Thief. I hope everyone had... Wow, look! Whoa! Look, you see that? You see that guy? I'm just talking about how to be a master thief, and he's he's talking shit. Um, we're going to have to go steal from him later. All right. Well, that's it. I hope everyone has a good, successful time stealing, and I will see you guys all probably in Serpent uh, Shadow Spire Cathedral. That's where I hang out. Bye-bye. <laughs>